All right, first thing we need to do, since we're right-handed, our pedal goes on the left. We have a bat on our wheel head. We use a wet sponge to clean off the bat. Like that. Then we dry it off the bat because we don't want a slick surface between our clay and the bat so that the clay sticks to the bat. So we clean that off, stop the wheel. We take our clay. What we want is a point to be on our clay. So when we set it down, we do a little rock and roll like that so that the point hits first and all the clay comes down around it so that we don't trap air between the clay and the bat. Like this. All right. Next thing we do is the police pat down. So we slap in and down with the heels of our hands and we want to stick the clay down to the bat. Our wheel goes slowly around while we do this. starts the centering process. All right. Next thing we do with a dry index finger is we just put it on the right hand side with our right finger and hold in and down and let the clay go around and we just drag our finger to seal the clay to the back. We don't want any holes or gaps for the water to get under and release the clay from the back. We do it again with a wet finger Seal it down, nice and tight, nothing's getting under it. No air, no water. Next thing we do is we get our hands wet, we get our clay wet, lots of water, and then we gas the pedal all the way to the floor. Next thing we do is we anchor our left elbow in our hip, and we set our left hand down at like a right angle. We want this to be like an L because as the clay comes around, it's gonna hit the heel of our hand right here as we push in and forward. Both hands are wet, clay is wet, and we brace our left hand with our right hand, and we keep a stiff thumb so that we can push everything in and forward. Our whole body and our knees are clasped around the splash pan when we do this as we push in. If the clay gets sticky, Add more water. Let me get rid of that. There we go. All right. This has started the centering process. Now I want to keep my hand at the seven o'clock position on my 12 o'clock. And I want to bring the other hand in opposite of it at the two o'clock position. Both elbows are anchored in my hips. Lots of water. And all I'm doing is I'm squeezing both hands together like this, and I'm rotating my thumbs in towards each other as I bring my fingers together and squeeze, and everything comes together like this. So squeeze forward. When I get to the top, I'm gonna hold. So it looks like this. They come up together. This is called coning up. Alright, again, squeeze up and in, hold at the top, gently release the pressure, we want everything to be centered, not wobbling around. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to mound down. The way that happens is our left hand just rides on the clay, stiff thumb up, and then we're gonna use the knuckle of our pinky finger right here, directly on top to push down. My thumb is up, this thumb is up, and I'm gonna cock this right wrist back towards me like I'm gonna suck my thumb. And that's gonna keep a rounded dome on the top because if I go forward or I go flat down, the next time I cone up, 
my edges are going to curl up and I'm going to end up with a cup on the top and I don't want that. And then I get my right shoulder up and over the clay and as I press down with my right hand, I have to press in with my left hand and the further down I go, the more I have to press in with my left hand to keep everything centered. I'm using my whole body. My elbows are tucked in, nice and tight, and I have my knees clamped around the splash pan for stability. All right. Bring that all the way down into a mound. All right. Beginners will cone up and mound down a total of three times. You're getting the clay centered and all the particles to go in the same direction and you're exercising your clay to get the air bubbles up and out. All right? So after you have coned up and mound down three times, your clay should be perfectly centered and not wobbling around. So when you look at it, it shouldn't be going all over the place. It should be perfectly smooth round. All right. Next thing we have to do is we have to make a belly button on top. So with our right index finger, we're going to set our left hand down just as a brace. With our elbows anchored in our hip. We're going to make a pistol with our right finger. We're going to turn it sideways like a gangster. And we're going to put our finger up against our thumb as a brace so that we're not chasing the clay around with our right finger. And just off to the right hand side of center, I'm gonna make a little belly button. And I wanna make sure that this circle is going around perfectly round and not oblong and off center. Because when I go to open, if I open off center, that means I have more clay on one side than the other and the be no way to center it again. It's going to be off center for the rest of the time. All right? Plenty of water. Index finger locked. We're going to plunge the index finger straight down to make a caldera in our volcano. So just off to the right hand side, we press straight down. And we're going to step about an inch from the bottom. All right? An inch is right about here, All right? That's where I stopped pressing down. When I open my clay, I'm gonna put that finger back down in there, and when I open, I wanna open straight back toward me. I wanna keep that same level. I don't wanna go back and down, and I don't wanna go back and up. I wanna go straight back, so my hands are locked together, my elbows are tucked in and locked into my hips as I come straight back, and an even pressure, and I wanna make sure that my inside walls don't walk out past my outside wall. And what that does is it keeps my rim and everything nice and tight in so that I don't lose control with centrifugal force. Next thing I need is water on the inside. I wanna take my large wood rib. A lot of them will look like this in the hole in the middle. You're going to make the long side face your left and the rounded side face your right. This point right here is going to go down in the center of the pot. And I'm going to use my thumbs on the back and index finger, middle finger, ring finger as a fulcrum. And it's going to go down at a 45 degree angle toward me. I don't want to gouge up and down and I don't want to gouge this way. I want the clay to flow past my rib. So I'm gonna go ahead and press, even pressure down, and I'm gonna walk it back and forth along the bottom of the pot, just slide it back and forth until the bottom is completely flat. And what this does is compresses the clay so that I don't get s cracks And the reason that I stopped an inch from the bottom is so that I'm gouging up clay I'm not gonna end up with a thin bottom. If I need to go again, I go ahead and go back, back and forth until it's completely flat. All right. So now that I've gouged up all that clay, the inside is flat. 
The next thing I want to do is make sure that my inside walls and my outside walls are wet. So I wring out my sponge right on the rim. And now all this water is stuck on the inside and I have to get that out because it's looking for a way out and it's going to dig a hole in the side of my pot looking for making a crack. So I have to go back with my left hand and my sponge to soak up all the water. All right, just like that. Next thing I want to do, my hands are wet. I want to slow my wheel down to half speed, just like this. I'm going to go ahead and tuck in my rim here. There we go. That's better. Give myself a head start. If I don't already have a shelf here, I push one in with my index finger on the right side so that I have a shelf to get a hold of. When I do my first pull, my right hand is on the outside much lower than my left hand on the inside. And I can grab like this or I can turn my right hand in and use the inside of my knuckle right here on the side of my hand to push. And when I'm pushing, I'm pushing in as I slowly walk the clay up and toward the center of the pot so I can keep control of the rim until the very end. So everything is slow, slow, slow. So we get to the top and then we hold, 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 and we gently start to release the pressure, all right? Then we compress the top. And that's done by left hand makes a squeeze like this. Make sure you have water. Right hand makes a bar like that. And you press the top down and you can control how much it flares out by squeezing in with your left hand. Get the walls wet inside and out again. Soak up all the water out of the inside. And go again. And we make a shelf on the outside with our right finger. Grab the clay. And slowly walk the clay up the side of the pot. We get to the top, we hold, 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 gently release our pressure. Now, if your pot ends up flaring out at the top, like this, what we're going to do is something called collaring in. And we do that by getting the outside walls wet. So we lay our left hand against the outside of the pot and we squeeze the sponge out to get the water up and down the outside of the pot so it's nice and wet. And we're gonna collar in by making a choke hold. So our elbows are in, our knees are in, and we're holding everything really steady and still as we choke and then we bring our hands straight up. And we want the wheel to be moving quickly when we do this. As we collar in the top of the pot. We hold, hold, hold. And we want to bring the rim in further in than the rest of the pot because that sets us up for success when we do our next pull. If we don't pull up and in, we end up pulling up and out a little bit then we have a way to move up and out without getting too far out and it'll still be straight up and down. Get the clay walls wet inside and out. Pull the water out of the inside, soak it up, left hand. Push the shelf in at the bottom so we have something to get a hold of. Get it wet and do your next pull. Slowly. Now, get 
to the top of the pot. Hold. Release your pressure. Compress your rim. Like so. What we're aiming for when we're doing the pull is to push in and up. And when our hands are opposite of each other like this, we're bringing everything up and in. And when we get to a certain point, we're gonna stop squeezing and pinching. And we're gonna hold that space between our hands like that so that our wall is the same thickness all the way up. So we're squeezing all of the weight at the bottom of the pot really hard in the beginning. And then as we're walking it up, we stop squeezing as hard. And so we start just bringing the wall up. Just asking the clay to move and stretch is what we're really doing. Inside and outside walls are wet. We'll do it again. We want to get all this weight down here and stretch it up. So that we have even thickness walls all the way up. All right. And I want my walls to be about a quarter of an inch thick. And the reason I want them a quarter inch thick is because when I get past the point of making a cylinder, if I want to stretch my walls out, I need enough weight in the wall to stretch without breaking. So we start out with a nice thick cylinder. Right, get the walls wet inside and out. The next thing we're going to do is a compression pull. I lost my rib. We're going to use our large wood rib again. We're going to go ahead and instead of our finger on the outside, we're using the long side of the rib to push in and up as we squeeze from the inside. And so we're compressing the clay. And we're taking all that slip layer off the outside. And we slowly bring the clay and the rib up. Tuck the rim in. We want to keep control of that rim until the very end if we ever want to flare it out. Because the further out it is, the more control we lose because the centrifugal force of the wheel is pulling it further out. And it'll get thinner and thinner and less controllable. Right. Right. Here we go. Next thing we need to do, pull the water out of the inside. We're going to use our wood rib knife, like this. It has a bevel on one side. We're going to hold it like a pencil. So towards us, the bevel is towards our, our body. And down here on the right hand side, we're going to pick a spot kind of high up and we're going to push in and down. We're going to shave the clay down like that. So we've got a ring of clay stuck to the back. Get the wood rib wet again. Instead of holding it like a pencil, we're gonna flip it so that the bevel is toward the back, like that. We're gonna go back into that crevice we just made and we're gonna put it in and we're just gonna tilt the whole thing down. And then we're gonna drag all that excess clay away. All right. Clean up the bat. So what this does is it sets us up for trimming. We'll go ahead and clean this up like that. So I don't have as much excess clay to trim once the pot is dry and it's flipped over ready to trim. All right. Now, we'll go ahead and clean this up on the inside. Go ahead and straighten my walls a little bit. Press in so it's a nice flat cylinder. All right. 
Next thing I want to do is I want to cut my pot in half so that I can see the thickness of my walls to make sure that I'm throwing properly. So I go ahead and stop my wheel. I take my wire tool and I put my thumbs down as I drag the wire toward me under my pot halfway and then I pull up. Bring it through the bottom of the pot and up through the walls. And what that does, it sets me up to pull half my pot apart from me. All right, I can set that up so I can see my progress. And what this does is it makes it so that I can see, do I have even thickness through my walls? They're naturally gonna be a little bit thicker on the bottom because eventually we're gonna be trimming all of this away, okay? Like that. So all of this will be gone on both sides. And then we'll also be trimming a foot well. So all of this will be the same thickness. So we want our bottom to be roughly the same thickness as our sides so that we don't get thick, thin spots because that creates stress points in all those spots right there, there, and there. We don't want that. So we want that'll all be gone, that'll all be gone, and then what we'll have is a floor that's the same thickness as our walls. And when it's flipped over to trim, we get second opportunity to compress the bottom from the other side so that we don't get an S crack through our pot, which will make it non-functional as far as water tight goes, okay? So it won't hold water. So the, your first goal is to try to get your, your walls the same thickness all the way up. Now, what that looks like when I do a pull from the inside, if you would see when we, we put that shelf in, when we put that line in the bottom, that shelf, my hand is on the outside like this, and my inside hand is in here, and when I squeeze all that meat right there, I'm squeezing as I'm bringing all of that up and in. And all I'm doing is stretching the clay as I slowly come up the outside of the pot, and that looks like this again. Right hand on the outside. I usually bring my finger in toward me press in from the outside or the inside and then roll a clay as you start to slowly walk it up the outside of the pot. And so that, that results in the walls getting taller. We're stretching that clay, we're just asking it to move. So your first thing you wanna be able to master is a cylinder because 90% of your pots start out as a cylinder. And the reason we want this thickness is because eventually if I start puffing part of my pot out and stretching those walls, I need enough meat or clay structure there for that to stretch because it's going to get thinner as I stretch that out, right? So if, if I ended up with a flower pot shape, this wall would end up a little bit thinner as I stretched it out. And that's why we want to start with about a quarter of an inch thick wall. And that's how you throw a pot. <laughs>